All right, Cliff, we appreciate it. We do bring you to Hillsboro High School, actually the middle school gymnasium for the seventh place game between the Placeter Tigers, Riley County Falcons. Riley County with the opening possession and the basketball drive inside by Zach Richard is up and good, and Riley County has an early 2 nothing lead. Down court quickly, Caleb Seabold in the corner right, drives inside the lane, takes it up in a crowd, and finishes it inside. We're tied at two apiece. So both teams able to get into the paint early. Riley County, the opening bucket, the Tigers counter with the drive by Seabold, and it's a 2-2 tie. Out top for Jackson Wagner to the timeline. He's pressured by Seabold. Now he gets control of it, takes it left and deep to Ty Nelson. Now he'll hold outside, lobs it toward the paint to Richard again, knocked out of his hands by Rodine, and to the baseline out of bounds, it will be Riley County with possession. Dalton Altizer will come out, Morgan Chestnut in early. So they got it inside to Richard as they did the first time. This trip, Rosine able to deny it and knock it out of bounds. It'll be brought in from the baseline. Huey lobs it out deep. Morgan Chestnut tips it away, but Jackson Wagner runs it down. Now it's going to be a steal on Cade Wallace as he went to double-team with Seabold on the play, and the basketball belongs to Riley County on the sideline. Just underway here, we'll continue to keep you updated with the reports and look-ins at Frankfurt with Cliff Casper, and he has a uh, full schedule still ahead in this TVL Championship Saturday here in the Trojan Classic in Hillsboro. Riley County with the basketball. Nelson to the ball, fake a drive, kick it out right wing. Jackson Wagner for three at 22 points yesterday. In the loss to Hillsboro, they lost by nine. 61-52 was that final. There's Nelson out top. Left wing, it goes to Wagner. Six and a half to work to the paint. They tried to get it inside. Rosine, a good job to tip it away from Richard before he could get the pass. Now Seabold down court. Just lost it out of his hands right in front of us. And Jackson Wagner, what a feed down low. Riley County able to finish in transition as Dalton Huey took the pass from Wagner and finished it. Riley County with a two-point lead. Now uh, kick basketball on the... Defensive end for Riley County, and it'll be back the other way, or back staying with Clay Center on the baseline. Wallace will inbound left of the window, underneath the Tiger backboard. Looks inside, Lane Livey wide open in the corner. They get it to him, but he's covered up. Back to Wallace, thought about the three. Now Livey, he will trigger the three ball. It's short, and the rebound saved back in by Chestnut, but it goes to Richard, and now taken away by Big Bo, but he is going to be called for the reach-in foul as Richard had cleared the board. So possession back to Riley County. They lead it by 2 4 2. 6 1 to work here in the opening period. Ty Nelson will walk it up the floor for Riley County. In action, the TVL continues. When we get the opportunity, we'll look in there again. Outside left with it on the wing now is Ty Rucker. He'll take it inside. Richard's got to look down low. Couldn't finish. Right back at the free throw stripe. The big guy takes it from there, misses, and a rebound rips down inside by Ethan Rosine. 540 remains. Tigers back with the basketball. They trail by a bucket. Left corner is Livey looking to lob it in low. Now outside deep it comes to Seabold and around right for Wallace. Right side wing is Rosine. Ethan Rosine looks inside to the point for Wallace. Drives left side to the baseline. Stops and gets it off to Rosine. He'll dribble to the free throw stripe. Knocked away by Wagner. Seabold gets it back. The Tigers keep possession. 515 remains opening quarter. Livey goes left and deep to Rosine. Now Wallace holds outside the arc. Here's Rosine to the right side. Stops, looks in low. He had Chestnut inside. The ball was lost out of bounds. Seabold actually got it safe back in. Jackson Wagner's on the move. Seabold on defense. Wagner pull up jumper in transition. He now has five. Again, coming off of a 22-point performance last night at 6-2. And there's a pull-up three ball from Lane Livey. Magic knocks it down. and It's a one-point ball game at 6-2. Wagner... Correction, first bucket on that last trip down the pull-up in transition. 6-5, to five, Riley County by one, nearing the midway point of this first period. Wagner, crossover dribble, almost lost it. Shovels it to the corner for Nelson. Now back outside to Wagner. Seabold pressuring there. 421 remains in this opening quarter of action from the Trojan Classic. Lane Libby is going to come up with a steal. Libby across the midcourt stripe. To Rosine in transition. He'll stop, let a defender go by, unable to finish, but is fouled on the rebound. Ethan Rosine will give the Tigers the basketball on the baseline. It's going back up on his missed shot. He was fouled by Riley County. And possession goes to the Tigers again on the baseline. Mason Allberg and Parker Folks both coming into the game now for the Tigers. It'll be Allberg to inbound. Mason looks low. 
Now to the high post, gives it to Chestnut. He'll pull the quick trigger. It's strong. Weak side rebound comes away to Riley County's tie record. Up the right sideline with the basketball is Nelson to Ruckert. Around left to Wagner. Just under four minutes to work. We're in the opening quarter. Long three out top from Nelson, and he drills it. Ty Nelson's first points, and now it's 9-5. to five. The Tigers back down by four. Seabold to Allberg. Right back to Caleb, and now Allberg runs the point. Looks at the Riley County defense and gets a deep left to Libby. Lane back outside. Allberg works it right with the dribble. On the wing, kicks it out top to Lane Libby. Lobbing it low for Morgan Chestnut. It's tipped, but he goes right to Allberg. Now to Libby. Left side wing is Spokes. Seabold holds against the Falcon man-to-man. Left on the wing deep is Spokes. Parker across court to the elbow right. Chestnut hands it off to Seabold. Ball taken away by Nelson. And then a reach-in foul against the Tigers. Parker Folks as Nelson went in transition. 318 left to work first quarter. It'll be Riley County's possession. From the sideline comes Tyler Halstead and T.J. Fritz for the Falcons. Also into the game, Tragen Thomas, who will inbound. The Tigers have Seabold, Alberg, Leiby, Wallace on the court right now. And Parker Folks. 313 to work. Left side wing and deep with it is Riley County. Tyler Halstead is caught without a dribble. Now hands it off to Wagner. Jackson Wagner against Siebel. Leaves him for a moment. Now fall away in the lane. The runner no good. Rebound back up by Halstead, and he gets it down. Tyler Halstead has put Riley County on top 11-5. Of course, these two teams met earlier this year. It was a 61-54 win for the Tigers at Riley County. Tigers trailing here early 11-5. Wallace, right side wing to Alburn. Mason holds, skips it across to Folks. Ball fake and drive. Ball fakes again, takes it up strong. Tragen Thomas calls for the foul, and Parker Folks will get to the strike and a chance to shoot two here for the Tigers. 5'11 junior caught it on the left elbow in a skip pass, and then ball faked and drove. And he'll get to the line here for a chance at two. 239 remains, 11 to 5. The score, the Tigers down by that six point margin, but again with two free throws coming. Parker Folks will get the first one. Charity up, and it's down. Folks with his first point of the game. The Tigers trail 11-7 now after the free throw. Ethan Rosine back on for Clay Center. Caleb Siebold will come out. First quarter action from the Trojan Classic. Again, more from the TVL coming up. We'll look at with Phil Casper when we have our first break here in this opening quarter. Parker Folks made the first. Second one is strong. Long rebound. Almost tracked down by Folks, but it's picked up instead by Halstead. Nelson will bring it across the midcourt line. As Wagner left, Fritz left wing now with it. Goes baseline to Wagner. Ball fake and drive. Runner on the way. A little teardrop won't go. Tip out by Thomas. It's picked up by Lane Leiby. Lane down court. Mason Alberg stops on the wing left. Back to Leiby. Around right. Wallace. Good look for three on its way. And just rattling out the rebound to Trey Thomas. Riley County back with it. Jackson Wagner will walk it up the floor. 2.07 left opening period. Tigers trailing here by five. Riley County with the basketball. Drive by Thomas all the way to the glass and a blocking foul against the Tigers' Lane Livy and two free throws coming to Tragen Thomas. Livy tried to draw the charge and just didn't quite get there in time. It's going to put at the free throws drive. Tragen Thomas, sophomore to shoot two. Lady Tigers will be playing at 545 later on in the evening as they play for the championship. Second year in a row to play in that title game. Second year in a row against Heston. Both teams state ranked should be a great matchup in the girls' championship. Thomas at the line. This is on the first. He with the two-shot foul. Drive to the glass. The foul on Lane Livy was his first. And it is the team's fourth for the Tigers. Second free throw good from Thomas. Full court pressure now by Riley County. 2-2-1 two, two, press. Tigers still in the backcourt. Rosine now fires it across up the middle of base of Allberg. He'll bring it left on the wing. This is Lane Libby. Down low it goes inside. Rosine up. Can't finish. Rebound tipped to the bounds. It'll stay with the Tigers on the baseline. They are at the end of the first at Frankfurt. And Valley Heights leads at the end of one quarter. 11-8. Valley Heights up 11-8 into the first period. At the TV, Elegant will check in with Phil Castor when we have that chance. Left baseline, Lane Libby. And his first three, he's hit two in a row. He struggled last night from the field. 
beyond the arc, second half, did score 10 points driving to the 10, but this time he's able to knock down two threes early. The Tigers got down by three. Here's Nelson with the drive. Shot blocked by Rosine. He averages two a game. Ethan brings it out of the pack himself, now stops in the backcourt, needs help. Across it comes to Mason Allberg. Allberg out top, left on the wing to Libby. 12-9, Tigers down by a triple after Lane Libby just nailed one from the corner beyond the arc. He has a left wing now, guarded by Halstead. He'll go free throw line to Rosine. Lower on the block. Chestnut takes it strong. Can't finish. Rebound inside. Rosine muscles it back up. Short. Thomas battling. Rosine again gets a hold of it. It's a jump ball call. The arrow belonging to play center. Ethan Rosine battling his tail off inside the lane along with Tragen Thomas and Morgan Chestnut. The Tigers end up with a jump ball. And it belongs to Clay Center. Near the free throw line. Ball taken away and a run out for... Nelson, Ty Nelson, the lay-in is good. Nelson now with four, five points in the game, and it's 14-9. Tigers down by five. T.J. Fritz now still in the midcourt against Wallace. Kicks it down the lane to Halstead. At the free throw line, Thomas, right side wing is Jackson Wagner. Now top to Nelson. Halstead has a left wing, 37 to work opening quarter. Right side wing. This is Nelson again. After the steal by Fritz, Thomas pull up jumper, and Drake and Thomas has three, and the Tigers have fallen behind 16-9. Pressure again against Clay Center. Turned it over a couple of times now against the pressure. At the half court, Wallace still in the back court. Rosine brings it across, now picks up his dribble, gets it left and deep to Libby. 14 to work. Libby all the way to the paint, hangs in the air, can't get it down. Rebound ripped in by Ty Nelson with eight. Wagner with seven. Now with five at the front court with four beyond the arc with three. With two, with one, he'll kick it out. They will not get the shot away. We'll head to quarter two. 16-9, Tigers trail after the first period here at Hillsboro. Let's send it over to Phil Cast for a check-in on the TVL. All right, Rock, thanks here. Valley Heights got off to a fast start, but Cliff and Clyde will not go away, and they have answered everything Valley Heights has thrown at them. The second quarter is just underway. Cliff and Clyde with possession now is steal. We're going to get Joe Rupke all the way by herself on the other end, Rocky, and alert the media, Joe Rupke just missed the lay-in. It is 13-9, Valley Heights with the lead, second quarter just underway. All right, Phil, thanks a lot, and that is a, a headline note, uh, Joe Rupke getting in the open floor and unable to finish for Valley Heights. Lady Mustang, the leading in that matchup uh, here on KCLY from the Twin Valley. They get a timeout right now at Hillsboro, the Tigers, at the end of the first quarter, down 16-9. to A few turnovers costly for Clay Center that resulted in buckets on the other end. Fortunately, the Tigers have had two three-pointers knocked in by Lane Leiby, a big part of uh, the Tigers hanging around here. Down by seven, though, after one quarter, it will be Riley County's possession. That Valley Heights girls game against Clifton Clyde for fifth place. Good matchup early. Lady Mustangs leading. Next up will be a fifth-place game, the Hanover Wildcats against Donovan West. Washington County and Centralia boys play for third. And then uh, some championship games tonight at 6, Hanover and Centralia girls. The Valley Heights boys will take on Troy at 7.30 from the TVL. Second quarter action here, Riley County with the basketball. Tigers down 16-9. The drive by Ty Nelson to the lane. Contact and a charge against Nelson. Ethan Rosine takes the charge inside. And Clayson will get possession back. So after one quarter, the Tigers down 16-9, and it's where the score stays after the Falcons' opening possession results in a charge. Ty Nelson's second foul here in the first half of play. Lane Leiby has it wing right out. It goes to Wallace. Wallace with the dribble against Nelson. Kicks it to the top for Leiby. High post looking for Parker Folks. Good catch. Kick out. Leiby's hit two threes. Now lobs it low. Rosine underneath the basket goes weak side. No. Right back up again. Rosine's got it down. Quick draw with the bucket, his first points of the game, and it's a 16-11 ball game. The Tigers score the first points of the second period. Nelson across the timeline, Libby out on him. Man-to-man by the Tigers and Falcons here early. Full court pressure by Riley County as well throughout much of this opening half. Nelson holds it wing right, now puts dribble down. The top of the key is Richard, ball fakes, drives, gets it up on the rim. He's going to be fouled by Rosine. Good quick step by the big guy inside. For Riley County, Zach Richard. He was able to get to the paint, draw the foul on Rosine. He'll get two free throws. Has two points early in the game, scored that in the first quarter. 6 3 senior again with two free throws coming here. First charity on its way is good. It's 
splashes it in, and it's a six-point lead now for Riley County. 17-11. One more free throw for the senior, the Falcon, Zach Richard. Made the first. Second one is rattling off. Rebound, though, inside Dalton Huey. He'll kick it out. Richard, ball takes the three, steps into the lane, and he offensive charges. That's Ethan Rosine's second charge he's taken here in the first half. The foul goes against Richard of Riley County, and the Tigers have it back down by six. It's 17-11. Lane Leiby in that first quarter with two threes leads the Tigers in scoring. Five points from Ty Nelson leads the way for Riley County. It's 17-11. Play center down by six with the basketball. Leiby works it outside. Another three. This one's short. Rebound to Wagner. And out of the pack comes Riley County. Three on one. Kick across on the left baseline. It's Ty Rucker with his first bucket. The assist going to Jackson Wagner. Now the Tigers down 19-11. Full court pressure again by Riley County. Wing right is Livy. He'll drive the paint. Takes it up in the lane. Hangs in the air. No. Rosine. Stick back. Can't get it. Livy again battling. It is going to be brought down inside by Caleb Seabold. He'll clear the lane with the dribble. The Tigers do keep possession. Now Rosine against Richard. Little baby hook falls home. And the Tigers are back within six at 19-13. Rosine with two quick buckets. Here in the second period, Nelson, left wing, out deep for Wagner. Wagner against Seabold. Nelson lobs it to the paint again. Richard trying to answer Rosine's bucket. Doesn't get the roll. Rosine brings down the board. Flyby down court, right baseline. Stops, cutting through the paint. Rosine, baby hook again. Strong, rebound, tipped around. Tigers have it. Folks kept it alive, and then Seabold runs it down. Sideline left is Wallace. Kate steps into the baseline for Siebel. Back outside, Cade Wallace. Murph takes it to the paint, all the way to the lane, off glass, no. Rebound to Rosine, and a foul is going to go against Riley County. This may be on Nelson. It'll be his third if it is. And it is on the Falcon sophomore. He picks up their, He picks up his third foul. That is correct, so he'll have to come to the sideline. 15 foul now on each. No free throws yet. 528 remains here in the opening period. Pass out top. Alberg open for three. He drills it. Mason Alberg steps in from the sideline and knocks in a three-pointer. And it's a 19-16 game. 5-18 to work first quarter. Now top with the dribble is record. He'll give it off to Halstead now. Wagner has it at the point against Seabold. 5 7 to work first quarter. Tigers down by three, but they've cut into what was a seven-point lead at one time. Wagner with it, left wing and deep. He'll take the three ball. It's strong. Weak side board. Livey battles. Brings it down. Clayson are looking to push it. The pass from Livey to Wallace. Reverse lay-in. Won't crawl in. The rebound comes away to Riley County. Zach Richards going to break it himself. Big guy kicks it to the corner. And that is Rucker to cross left to Halstead. Ball fake and drive. Cut off by Alberg and Livey and still finishes. Tyler Halstead, a tough bucket off glass. Down court quickly. Alberg to Livey. Outside to Wallace, 21-16. Tigers trail by five, 4.28 to work at this opening half. Seabold with the basketball in low. They get Chestnut posted up. He'll take it strong. It's blocked right back up. Now kicked across the lane. Livey with the left hand. He now has eight first half points. And the Tigers again down by three, 21-18. Almost the midway juncture of the second quarter and a timeout taken by Coach Steve Fritz. 21-18 here. We'll send it over for a check-in with Flipcast Rick Frankford. All right, Rock, thanks. Valley Heights has now gone up 20-14 to 14 on the two-point floater from Kayla Smith. 20 points for Valley Heights. It is 9 for Kayla Smith, 11 for Joe Rupke. Valley Heights leads Clifton Clyde, 20-14, to 14, 2.58 left in the first half. All right, Flip, thanks. It's 21-18 here. Tigers trail, but again, they've been down by as many as 7 in this first half of play. They trailed... That margin, 16-9, going into the second quarter. But now as we work our way through halfway through the second period, they are back within three at 21-18. Out of the Riley County timeout, it will be Falcon possession near the half-court stripe on the sideline. Tigers led in scoring by Lane Libby's eighth. They get, Riley County gets five from Ty Nelson, four from Tyler Halstead thus far. Right wing and deep is Ruckert. Caught in a double team by Wallace and Seabold. Gets it outside now to Halstead. Back right to Ruckert. 
Double team again. Kick out now to Wagner against Seabold. 348 to work second quarter. Tigers down 21-18. Here's Huey in the lane to Richard. He'll drive the paint. Foul on his way in. No, he traveled on his way in there. Traveled before the contact, and it's back to Clay Center down by three. 342 remains second quarter. Wayne Livey into Cade Wallace. Allbird, Chestnut, and Seabold also on the floor for the Tigers. Right side wing is Wallace. Cade holds outside the arc. Top of the key, Allbird hit his first three. Now goes to the paint for Chestnut. He'll take it up against Richard. It's strong. Rebound weak side comes away to Caleb Seabold. Riley County back with it. They lead by three over the Tigers. 3.20 left to go first half. High post, right elbow is Dalton Huey. Outside to Wagner. Man to man by the Tigers. Richard trying to post it in low. Chestnut didn't allow that entry pass. Now back outside for Wagner. Left on the wing is Ruckert. Now around right to Halstead. Baseline against Allbird. Cut off. Back out to Wagner. Left elbow, Zach Richard. Under three to work now first half. Here's Ruckert for three. Left wing. No. Weak side board. It was brought down by Riley County. Ruckert, but he falls to the ground. He calls for travel. Good position on the weak side. By correction, it was Tyler Halstead who brought it down. But he fell to the floor, so the turnover goes back to Clay Center. 252 remains in this first half of play. The Tigers down by a triple and back with possession. Dane Wallace into the front court. Left on the wing is Caleb Seabold. Skips it across to Chestnut. Ball fake. Starts to drive, and now we have a traveling against the Tigers as Big Mo got bumped on his way into the paint and ended up traveling with the basketball. Parker pokes back in. Chestnut will come out. 240 remains first half. It's 21-18. Zach Richard and Morgan Chestnut having a conversation that now Parker Folks picks up on as he comes in for Morgan. Left baseline, T.J. Fritz with it. He'll kick it out to the top, Tragen Thomas. 225 to work. We're in the second quarter. Thomas drives, hangs in the air. It's strong. Rebound to Halstead. He'll take it back up. Can't get it. Zach Richard will clear it out up top to Jackson Wagner. He'll drive the lane. Takes it against contact. Blocking foul against Mason Allberg. And Wagner hit it to the line to shoot two. Allberg kind of got caught in the middle of whether to go defend or try to take the charge. And maybe the hesitation cost the blocking foul called against the Tiger Jr. Wagner in the stripe. Knocks in the first free throw. He has three points. 5'11", senior at 22 in the loss to Hillsborough last night, 61-52. 22-18. There's blood on the shoulder of Zach Richard. So they'll have to substitute in for him, and Dalton Huey does come in. Four-point ball game. Tigers down by that margin. Wagner trying to add to Riley County's lead and does with a second free throw. 23-18. Now pressure again by Riley County little different look. They get it up the right sideline to Caleb Siebel. He'll attack the paint. Hangs in the air. What a shot by the one-man press. He's got four, and the lead back down to three, 23-20. Two minutes left to go first half. Wagner into the front court. Valley Heights, Clifton Clyde girls in action in the TVL. We'll get you back over there with a look in, and at, or at halftime, we'll get you a little further bonus coverage. What a move by Dalton Huey getting inside the lane. He has four points. Tigers back again by five, but here's Wallace for three, top of the key, no. Got a wide open look, couldn't finish. Halstead with the outlet pass. Caleb Siebold trying for the steal is going to pick up the foul. That'll be the seventh team foul on the Tigers. And that'll put Wagner back to the free throw line, this time for a bonus one and one situation for Caleb Siebold, his first foul. Riley County is three of six at the stripe. Wagner, two of two. The Tigers are one of two at the line. 25-20. Wagner, front end, crawls in there. Wagner now with five. Three for three at the line for the Falcon senior. 26-20, Riley County by six. And now their halftime lead of seven is back intact at 27-20. Then at 35 to work, first half. Tigers trailing here in the front court and a double team. Siebel, good job to get out of it. Now walks it across with the dribble and hands it to Lane Leiby. Down to the post, Rosine. Ethan into the lane, turns, squares. Baby hook off glass, no. Tip up by Leiby. 
Now the rebound to Halstead, and for the second time, Halstead's come down in a crowd with a rebound, once on defense, the other time on offense, and he's been bumped and taken to the ground and then picked up the travel, and Placer gets the basketball back. Trailing here, 27-20. A minute 19 to work in the opening half. Corner left, the ball comes inbounds to Mason Olberg. Out top, Siebel. Thought about three. Now takes it toward the paint, all the way in the lane. Up and no. Rebound, Rosine bumped from behind by Tragen Thomas. That's going to put Ethan Rosine next to the basketball out of bounds. Just a six-team foul against Riley County. So the next one will put the Tigers in the bonus. And now a timeout taken by Coach Kelly Williams. A minute 11 left to work. It's 27-20. Tigers down. Timeout on the floor. Let's send it over to Frankfurt. All right, Rock, we've gone to halftime here. Valley Heights leading 26-18 over Clifton Clyde. Clifton Clyde really hanging around, battling hard, and they are keeping themselves in this game. 26 points for Valley Heights. We've got 11 for Kayla Smith, 15 for Joe Rupke, all 26 coming from two players. 26-18 at halftime, Valley Heights lead. All right, Phil, we appreciate it. 27-20 here. The Tigers down by that seven-point margin. 26-18, 26-18, as you heard, Flip St. Valley Heights leading Clifton Clyde. Good battle there in the TVL uh, in a uh, fifth-place matchup. Uh, next up will be a uh, fifth-place boys game, and then we have uh, the third-place games and, of course, two championship tilts that are coming up tonight that should be really, really interesting. The Hanover girls will be following through the uh, girls' championship game, and then the Valley Heights Mustangs boys making a heck of a run in the TVL will be playing tonight as well. 27-20 here. It is... Clay Center's basketball below the uh, Tiger bucket with a minute 11 to work in this opening half of play. And the basketball belongs to Cade Wallace to inbound from left of the glass. Looks down low for Seabold. Didn't have an opening. Now needs to get it in somewhere. Lobs it out deep for Lane Livey. Livey against Jackson Wagner. Two guys that played a lot of basketball in the summer together. Now going head-to-head on the basketball floor of the two seniors. Here's Wallace, left side wing Livey. Holds outside under a minute to work. Ball is kicked by Wagner, and the basketball stays with play center on the baseline once again. Now to the right side. 56 to work. 27-20 ball game. Thomas picked up a second foul a moment ago. Now we will come out of the game. Zach Richard back in. Wallace to inbound. Seabold underneath the basket goes up. It's blocked. The rebound tipped out and picked up by Wagner. He takes it down court. Wild shot no good. And actually it hit the support above the backboard. And so... The Tigers will get it back with 49 to work. Down by a 27-20 margin. Tigers with the basketball trailing here in the opening half. Cade Wallace outside against the Riley County zone defense. Actually, they are straight man-to-man, but we're staggered in the middle for a while. Here's Wallace right side wing, 34 to work. Now back to Seabold. Now Wallace to the top, 27 seconds. Caleb Seabolt dribble attacks, takes it in a crowd. A foul's call, two free throws coming to the Tigers. Caleb Seabolt with four points here in the opening half. Will he get to the stripe to shoot two? Foul was called on T.J. Fritz, his first, for Riley County. Seabolt's first free throw rims off. Tigers are now one of three from the line in the first half. 25 seconds to work in the second quarter. Seabold, one more free throw coming. Missed on the first, second one. Good rotation, and he gets the crawl in. He's got five. The lead is six points for Riley County. 23 seconds to work in the second quarter. Wagner walks it up the floor. 17 left, Riley County. Likely going for the final shot here in the corner with a six-point lead. Halstead, double team coming. Now he ball fakes, dribble drives all the way to the lane. Layen won't go with the left. Rebound to Rosine. Seabold with four across the timeline with three. It's poked away. Now the ball loose, and that will end the first half. Riley County leads by six, headed to halftime here at Hillsboro. 27-21, Riley County over the Tigers. Stay with us. More coming from both Hillsboro and Frankfurt in the Trojan Classic and TVL on KCLY. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Thanks to a new Oldie soil-specific seed online service, your Oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field prescription. 
customize every acre with the highest potential hybrid based on soil types, trait package needs, disease threats, and agronomic preferences. Valuable data can also be shared with trusted suppliers. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555. Twin Valley proudly announces our new Pulse Gigabit Internet. Available now in Clay Center. Equal to 1,000 megabits per second, our new speeds can support all your devices, all at the same time. Stream movies, download content, surf the web, and more. No buffering and no waiting. So what are you waiting for? New customers who call today get two months free internet service. Visit TwinValley.net or give us a call at 800-515-3311. Twin Valley Pulse. Your life connected. The deli department at Ray's Apple Market has something that will go with everything. Whether you're looking for a basic everyday Swiss to serve with grapes and crackers or the Cajun style turkey to create that perfect sandwich, you'll get it at Ray's Apple Market. Deli meats, cheeses, and Rock House signature salads are always fresh and delicious to serve up the way you want. Customers appreciate the variety, the quality, and the remarkable flavor of the deli selection at Ray's Apple Market. The Citizens National Bank has a long history of supporting the students of our community on the mat, on the court, or in the classroom. Our support doesn't stop when the season is over or the school year ends. We believe in the value of higher education that is building our future leaders of our community and country. CMB offers a student checking. This account will transition you from being a local student to attending the college of your choice. Stop by and talk with one of our CSRs today. The Citizens National Bank, a member of FDIC. 27-21 here at the halftime break. Foot uh, Casper will be joining us here in a moment to get us caught up on the first half. Valley Heights leading over Clifton Clyde in what uh, been a good battle thus far. Lady Eagles really battling down by eight points to Valley Heights at the half here. The uh, Tigers also battling back from a slow start. They trail by six at the break, 27-21. Riley County is led by Jackson Wagner, who has six first half points, four of four at the free throw line for the 5 11 senior. Ty Nelson with five, including the Falcons' only three point bucket. Tyler Halstead has four, three points, or four points also from Dalton Huey. Three points from Tragen Thomas, and also two from Zach Richard in this first half. The Tigers again 27 21, trailing by six. Clay Center is led by Elaine Libby's eight points, five coming from. Caleb Siebel, they get four from Ethan Rosine, a three ball knocked in by Mason Alberg. Parker Folks with one free throw is the only point in the first half. The uh, three-pointer from Alberg, one of three the Tigers hit. The other two knocked down by 6-4 senior Lane Leiby. 27-21 here at the break. It is the Tigers down by six. We'll take another timeout. When we come back, we'll check in with Bill Casper. A message from Geisler Roofing and Home Improvement in Concordia. Brutal winter days will be here sooner than you think. Is your home properly insulated to keep the cold outside and keep your energy bills affordable? If not, Geisler Roofing offers several different solutions, including spray foam insulation. At Geisler Roofing and Home Improvement, we've got you covered. Geisler Roofing and Home Improvement, we've got you covered. Every major construction project uses concrete in one form or another. From residential driveways to basements, patios and curbs, Midwest Products make great use of their ready-mix concrete. They operate four state-approved plants in Hanover, Clay Center, Lynn and Washington to meet the needs of residential, commercial or farm-related projects. Livestock slats, feed bunks, landscape rock and more are all available from Midwest Products. Give them a call for all your jobs that require ready-mix concrete. 800-371-2252. Hey folks, Bill Rice from the Green Team. I know we're a Dodge Chrysler Jeep store, but we take a lot of different things in trade. So right now we've got a great selection. How about this? A couple of 2011 Chevy Equinoxes, LTs, great looking vehicles. Or how about this? A Ford Escape with only 36,000 miles. Or even a couple Buick Encores. We've got a couple Buick Encores, very nice vehicles with low, low miles. So come check these out at the Green Team, 802 West Crawford, or on the web at greenteamcars.com. 
add big flavor to your next get-together with Subway Catering. Featuring good-to-go boxed meals with a side and freshly baked cookie, crowd-pleasing giant subs, and piled-high sandwich platters overflowing with flavorific choices. All made the way you say with everything you love. Subway Catering is simple, satisfying, with something for everyone. A great value for any budget. Visit Subway.com to order and let us take care of any occasion. Subway. Cater fresh. Some catering orders may require 24-hour advance notice. 27 21 here at the half. We're still about uh, five minutes away from the second half getting going. I know they're about ready to work, though. Valley Heights and Clifton Clyde girls. So let's send it over to Bill Casper in Frankfurt. Yeah, we're just getting ready to get underway. Clifton Clyde will start with possession. They trail 27 18 to the Mustangs. Clifton Clyde really has hung with Valley Heights pretty well. Again, the correct is scored 27 18 16 for Joe Rupke, 11 for Kayla Smith, 7 for Macy Callahan. Now close and Clyde in a little bit of trouble. Ball knocked away by Taylor Donner. Shaley Lawson will inbound for the Lady Eagles. Gets it into Kaufman. And a man defense from Valley Heights. Rupke on Elizabeth Nobert. That's been a pretty good matchup. Nobert's held her own against the future Ichabod. Kaufman now top of the key, guarded by Smith. She holds, now drives left side of the lane. She'll take a 10-footer off the mark. Rebound knocked around. Dover takes it away from Brufke, goes back up strong, and she's fouled. Uh, she's going to be fouled by Miranda Oldie. So Nobert has six points in the game. She'll shoot two free throws. First one up and rattles out. Again, we'll get you back to Hillsboro whenever Rocky's ready for second half action. Second half just underway here. Elizabeth Nobert to shoot one more. Free throw up and good. Nobert hits one of two. 27-19. Smith brings it down for the Mustang. Gets it back up to Donor. Rupke on the wing. Baseline Smith. Smith dribbling in. Now she'll kick it back up to Donor. Now DeAndre Woodyard will take a 15-footer from the baseline. That won't go. Rebound to the Eagle. AC Callahan comes out of there with it. Clifton Clyde just hanging around. Shaley Lawson lobs it into Nober. Turns, faces Rupke, shoots over her. That's off the mark. Good defense by Rupke. Now ball knocked away and out of bounds off Joe Rupke. Bailey Bowser inbounds Lawson. Back to Bowser on the baseline. Shot up and she's foul. Be fouled from behind, I believe, by Woodyard. And no, they'll give that one to Joe Rupke. I thought Rupke had pretty good position. Woodyard came in from behind. Regardless, Bowser shooting two. First one in. <laughs> Bailey Bowser hits the first. She's got four points. This 27 20 game. Bowser, one more on the way. Good. Hit them both. The 27 21. Rupke, right baseline. She'll dribble back up top. Now in the lane. Now kicks it back out front to Musel. Left wing. Donor to Rupke. Cross court. Underneath feed. What a look into Kayla Smith. And Kayla Smith cannot finish. But Joe Rupke, a no-look pass into Smith. And Smith just couldn't get the ball. The so back two puts the Clyde. I'll try to chip into this lead again. Lawson, top of the key, two, no, rebound Rupke. Rupke's bringing it down herself. She'll shoot from 15 and hit. 18 points now for Joe Rupke at 29-21. Lawson will walk it down to Kaufman. Kaufman guarded by Smith, picks up her dribble, needs help, nearly has it taken away. Bowser ends up with it. And Coach Kyron Worth wants a timeout. 5.25 left in the third. It's the 
21 Valley Heights lead when we come back. Walls True Value and the Twin Valley League have a lot in common. We share a fan base as we have sold appliances to the wonderful people in Centralia, Axtell, Frankfurt, Clifton, Onega, Lynn, Washington, and, well, you get the idea. We have done so because of fair pricing and friendly service, promoting value above all, and working hard to take care of our customers. Stop in and see us for your appliance needs at Walls True Value in beautiful downtown Clay Center, open seven days a week for you. 5.25 left in the third. It's the 29-21 Valley High lead. Let's send to Hillsboro and Rocky Downing. All right, Phil, as always, look forward to hearing the look-ins coming up here in this uh, second half for the matchup between Valley Heights and Clifton Clyde here. The Tigers down by six, opening possession. Ethan Rosine with the baseline left. Now stops looking to go in low to Morgan Chestnut, and it's kicked out of bounds. It will stay with Clay Center on the baseline. 27-21. Wallace inbound. Looks inside toward Rosine and Chestnut. Not there. Now in the corner gets it to Livy. Now they get it to the post. Morgan Chestnut back outside Livy. Lane looking in low. Not there to Rosine. Ball fake. Pulls the trigger from eight feet. Short. Rebound. And it's going to be a foul against the Tigers coming over the top. Rosine the miss and tried to get it back. And he'll be whistled for the bump. And it'll be the first whistle of the second half. And it's Rosine's second foul. 27-21. Tigers still down by six. Riley County's first possession. Three-quarter court trap of the Tigers. Falcons break it down. Wagner open from 15 off the mark. Rebound a weak side to Chestnut. And the Tigers able to get a stop and a defensive board. Wallace down the floor. To the post for Rosine against Richard. Goes across the lane and he stepped out of bounds as he tried to plant that right foot. And he slipped just a touch and it caught the baseline. And so the Tigers turn it over. And we'll go back to full court pressure now. Dalton Huey will inbound. Up the court it comes to Ty Nelson playing with three fouls. Great feet down the floor, and Wagner finishes in transition. Wagner now with eight, and the Tigers trail by that margin, 29-21. Wallace will bring it across. Chestnut and Rosine, the post. Libby and Sewell on the wings against the Falcon defense. They go wing right now to Libby outside to Wallace. Around left. He is guarded by Nelson. Top of the key goes to Siebel. Rip through, step through, and all the way to the lane through four buckets. Caleb Siebel, great attack of the paint and gets the foul, a chance at hoop and arm. He now has seven points in the game and cuts the lead back down to six. The foul on Dalton Huey, his second. And Siebel at the line to shoot one here to try to convert the old-fashioned triple. 29-23, Tigers down six. Free throw up and rattles out. Rebound battled for. Lost out of bounds to Riley County. Rosie battling it there, but unable to get a grip on it. And the possession goes to Riley County. Actually, it's a foul called against the Tigers. That's going to be three on Rosie. I thought it was just a loose ball out of bounds. And they say one on the board. The last time they flashed a foul on Ethan, it was his second. 29-23, and it is the third on Rosine. So, Ethan Rosine and the foul issue right now still on the court. 6-14 to work. Right side deep is Ty Nelson to the post, Huey. To the corner, Rucker around left to Wagner, and it gets through his hands and out of bounds, and the Tigers will have it back now by six. Timeout taken here on the floor. Let's check in again with Phil Casper in Frankfurt. Hi, Rock. Thanks. Flicks and Clyde had cut this to a six-point game, but Valley Heights, has gone on a run here. They now lead 13, 36, 23. Joe Rufke in this game now has 23 points, 13 for Kayla Smith. 36, 23, Valley, Valley Heights lead, 309 left in the third. All right, Phil, here it's the Riley County Falcons over the Tigers, 29, 23, with 606 to work in the third quarter as well. So we'll continue to get you dual coverage of both these uh, gyms and of course, after this, uh, we've got a break here as far as the Tigers going, but I'll be keeping you updated on the Riley County Falcon girls. I'll be in the gym uh, waiting for the Lady Tigers to get going, so give you an opportunity to keep people up to date on the Falcons who are playing for third place here against Host Hillsboro. 29-23, Clay Center right now trailing by six. Lane Livey out top to the post for Chestnut. Morgan turns, goes strong. He's fouled. That's going to be the third now on Dalton Huey. 
And Big Mo headed to the free throw stripe. He'll have two free throws coming. Scoreless in this game, he had a uh, good performance in the opening game with eight points, and that loss to Bennington. Free throw line up and making is Chestnut. So it'll be one more free throw coming for Morgan. 29-24, Tigers within five. Chestnut free throw, strong. Rebound comes off to Zach Richard of Riley County. Falcons back down court. Ty Nelson with it. Double team coming from Rosine and Wallace. They swing it around to the baseline, left block. Richard kick out, right wing three ball from Nelson is long. Weak side rebound, though, comes off to Riley County. Now it's Wagner for 3 no, and the Tigers trying to run it out. Two on one. Siebel to Rosine. He stops, shoots, buckets it, and we have a whistle. They call a travel against Rosine in transition that time. Late whistle. It was after the shot was up and off the glass, so everybody in the gym thought there was going to be a bucket and a foul. And instead, it's a travel violation against the Tigers, and he gives it back to Riley County still with a five-point lead. Play center in that 1-3-1 zone defense now. Craig and Thomas and the Richard. Here's Wagner around right to Nelson. To the corner goes to Rucker. 5-10 left. Long pass left side to Wagner. And on top of the key is Nelson. Back to Wagner. Three ball up and rims out. Rebound to Morgan Chestnut. Tigers with it. Five minutes to work third quarter. They trail by five. To the post. Good look inside. Seabolt to Rosine and he finishes. Quick draw with six down. The lead back down to three. Great pass from Caleb Seabolt. Had a good angle on that wing right and was able to feed it on a bounce right to Rosine for the easy duck inside. Here's Nelson out to the left wing. He goes to Thomas. Touch pass for Wagner. Top of the key, Nelson. Doesn't look at a three this time. Now around left, Wagner. He also had a chance, didn't take it. Instead, the floater near the lane, and Wagner has 10. The lead back to 5, 31-26. Here's Wallace in the lane. Ball batted away. Wagner has it. He's tripped by Chestnut. And it'll be Riley County's basketball on the sideline. 423 left to go third quarter. Tigers down by five, and Riley County gets it back. Chestnut with his second foul. Tigers have Wallace and Rosine. Wybie, Chestnut, Seabold on the floor. For the Falcons, Nelson, Wagner, Ruckert, Thomas, and Richard. Nelson to the corner right. Ruckert back outside deep is Jackson Wagner. Three-pointer try again. This time he connects. He has 13 now. The Tigers trail by eight. Here's Wallace in the front court. 34-26. Midway point third quarter. Four minutes left the third. Elbow left is Chestnut. Hands it off to Wallace. Ball takes it back out to Seabolt. Caleb looks to drive. Not there. Around right it goes to Lyme. Lane. Back to Seabolt. Now left wing deep. Wallace. Cade looking in low. Skips it to the elbow right, Chestnut. Attacks against Richard. Turns, spins, block, rebound to Siebel. Caleb right back in the lane. Fires it up, fouled. He'll step to the stride. Caleb Siebel will get to the free throw line. He has seven points in the game, one of three at the line in the contest. He'll get two free throws coming here. 3.39 left third quarter. Siebel's free throw up and good. Gets the lead back down to seven. It was a six-point game at halftime. Allstead and Fritz back in the game now for Riley County. Caleb Siebold with eight points. One more charity coming. The Tigers trailing 34-27, but again, one more free throw now on the way. This one up and crawling in there. Siebold has nine, and the Tigers are back within six, 34-28. Still 339 left third quarter. Wagner will walk it up. Tigers in a 1-3-1 zone. Rosine at the point. Folks in the middle. Wallace and Alberg on the wings. Livey down low. Fritz in the corner. Double teamed and ball gets batted out of bounds. It will stay with play center on the sideline. 34-28 ball game. Or it stays with Riley County, I should say. As the ball was batted out of bounds by Cade Wallace in a double team. Thomas into Rucker. He'll hold wing right. Double team coming again. Now near the timeline, ball forced away. Albert, good hustle play. Wagner then on the other end, able to take it back for Riley County. Wagner in transition, ball tipped away to the sideline, saved in by Fritz. Now Livey near steal. Did he knock it off of Riley County? He did. Livey, great hustle play on the sideline. Both teams really 
made a couple of plays to keep the basketball alive, but eventually Lane Lively not only tipped it away, but off of the Riley County Falcons, Tragen Thomas, and so Placeter gets it back down six, 3.09 to work. Here's Wallace, fakes left, goes right all the way to the glass, and good. Murph with his first bucket. He had three assists in the first half, but his first point scored on his drive down inside. 1-3-1 one, one zone defense, under three to work. Records at the corner, Fritz. Lobs it to cross paint. Ball nearly taken away by Allberg. Now the dive by Rosine keeps it alive. Wallace in the front court. The Tigers down by four and back with possession again. The lead had grown to seven. And now the Tigers cut it to uh, two buckets and have the basketball. Wallace out deep left. Out top to Livy. Rosine posting. Wants it inside. They take it to him. Off glass. Shot on the run. No. Rebound. Almost tied up by Rosine. But it's ripped away by Ruckert. In the front court, Wagner. Double team comes at him. Lane Leiby. Great anticipation. Now, Albert to Rosine. Back to Leiby. Lane. Oh, great look inside. Rosine can't finish. One more chance, though, and we got a two-point ball game. Rosine with eight. And now Kelly Williams wants a timeout to coach on the Tiger sideline. Clay Center back within 234-32. We'll check it again now in Frankfurt with Cliff Casper. All right, Rock, we've got three quarters in the books, headed to the fourth. It is a 39-27 Valley Heights lead. They've stretched this out a little bit. Macy Callahan has 11 for Clifton Clyde. Joe Rupke now has 26 points in this ball game. 13 from Kayla Smith. Two players have 39 points for Valley Heights at up 39-27. It's a 34-32 ball game here. Uh, you mentioned Joe Ripke. We know going to Washburn next year to play and had a chance to call her last game last Saturday. Valley High played us. think she scored 30 in that opening game. So maybe our way to another 30-plus point performance this year. 34-32 here. Tigers trail by two, but they were down by as many as seven and cut it down to a two-point ball game. 2.09 left third quarter. Wagner walks it through the center circle. Now goes to work against Wallace. Kick out left side. Halstead will drive. He's cut off by Parker Folks, but gets the shot up over and off glass and good. Halstead, who had six first half rebounds, has now six points in the game to go along with it. Here's Livey out deep for Wallace. Cade back to Lane Livey. He hit two threes in the first half. On his way to eight points, he's yet to score here in the second half of play. 36 32, a minute 35 to work third quarter. Tigers with the basketball down by four. Rosine down to Parker Folks goes for the reverse lay and he's fouled and Big Daddy's headed to the stripe to shoot two free throws. He was one of two at the line in the first half. Took his reverse lay in on the weak side. Shot was not near the rim, but he was bumped underneath the backboard and the foul was called against Riley County's Tragen Thomas's third. Folks at the line, first free throw, up and good. Parker now with two points in the game. The lead back down to three for Riley County. Rosine will come out. He's been doing a good job to continue playing with the three fouls he had again. Did not pick up another. He comes to the sideline with the 30 left third quarter. Folks made the first free throw. Gets the crawl on the second when he has three points in the game, three or four at the line. A minute 30 remains. It's 36-34. Tigers back within two again. Riley County's possession. Now Mason Allberg out at the point of the one 3 one zone defense. Wallace and Seabold on the wings. Now the dribble drive baseline left. Hall said cut off. Out top to Nelson. Takes the three. Starts at left. Now Seabold and Allberg. They kick it right corner to Thomas. Wallace almost got to the basketball. Now the pass inside the lane. Zach Richard dump off for Halstead. His bucket's good. He has eight. Play center down by four. Wallace back the other way. Lane Leiby fakes the three. Steps toward the paint. Stops and outside it comes to Keith Wallace. Down the corner. Leiby for the three ball. His third of the game. Leiby with 11. And the Tigers within one. 38-37. Magic knocks it down left corner. Good kick out off the drive from Kate Wallace. 45 to work. Long pass down the floor. Halstead saved what looked like it might be going out of bounds. Now Seabold and Leiby, good double team. Halstead gets rid of it. Record has it. Now around right baseline. Thomas rises up for the 16-footer. No, Halstead, another rebound and a stick-back bucket good. Tyler Halstead now with 10 points and seven boards in this game, and he's headed to the line to try to convert an old-fashioned three-pointer. 
has put Riley County back on top by three, 40 to 37. Halstead with a free throw coming, a six foot sophomore, now with 10 points. At the stripe, Lefty puts it up, rims it off, rebound to Livy. Tigers down three with the basketball. Lane Livy down court, stops at the point. Works it right wing now, holds outside, top of the key, Wallace fakes it, steps in, pulls from 15 feet, and it rims off. Rebound kept alive by Allburn, but it's picked up by Riley County with 12. Ty Nelson to the front court. Ten seconds left. Here's Zach Richard. Kick out to Rucker. Out of seven. Now six. They kick it across baseline right. Thomas tries to drive it. It is going to be fouled by Lane Livey, a blocking foul. And with three seconds remaining, Riley County will have it on the baseline, leading by three from underneath the basket. The foul on Lane Livey that trip will be his second. Thomas to inbound. Three seconds remains in the third. Tigers down by three. Record for three at the buzzer. No good. Rebound to Caleb Seabold. A good one here in Hillsboro. Tigers have battled back within three. We're headed to the final eight minutes. It's Riley County 40. Play center 37. Let's send it over now to Phil Casper. All right, Rock shooting free throws here. Shaley Lawson stands at the line. Hits one. Can't hit the other one. Rebound over. Leans in and she fouled. It is 48-32, Valley Heights up with 5.41 left in the ballgame. The biggest news since we last talked, somebody not named Smith or Rubke scored for Valley Heights. A three ball for Shea Manley, Joe Rubke sits at 28. It is 48-32, 5.41 left in the game. All right, Phil, as always, we appreciate it. Let's get a 30-second timeout. Your fourth quarter from Hillsborough is coming up next. Get more than propane when Propane Central delivers. Get a free gas system check, payment plans to fit any budget, and flexible delivery options. You can also earn free gas with their generous customer referral program. Just another way, Propane Central offers the best value in propane. Headed to the fourth quarter here. Riley County will have the basketball to start. It is double teamed by Clay Center, and they force a travel on the opening possession. Ty Nelson walked right into a double team there, and that uh, no man's land you want to stay out of just across the half court line on the sideline, and the Tigers force him into a turnover and get it back down by three. Cade Wallace with the dribble out top. Ty Nelson on him. He'll work at left wing. Now looks to the baseline, not there, around right, Livey, fakes the three, steps in, kick out, Wallace, also a fake on the three, doesn't take it, they'll back it out and re the offense. Wallace with it, right side. Now to Siebold, back to Cade. Now Siebold again with it, 7.21 to work, fourth quarter, lob down into the paint. Rosine trying to go to work, double team, kick out to Siebold. Chestnut and Rosine run the post on the ball side. Now Siebold all the way around to the left corner, and he walks with the basketball. The Tigers turned it over, as did the Riley County Falcons on the first fourth quarter possession. So possession goes back again to the Falcons. one 3 one defense for Clay Center. Wagner to Ty Nelson. Left sideline, now kicks it back across. The ball nearly taken away by Cade Wallace. It was thrown behind Wagner. Wallace thought he could get to it and have a chance on the other end, but he just couldn't quite get possession of it. And so Riley County will keep the basketball. 40-37 ball game, 6.54 to work here in the fourth quarter. Tigers down by three. Ty Nelson gets it in the backcourt. 40-37 ball game. Here's Nelson near the timeline, right back to Halstead, and he walked with the basketball. So both teams have had multiple turnovers to begin the fourth quarter. Tigers still trail here by the three-point margin at 40-37. Wallace to Rosine, left wing deep, Siebold. Down to the right elbow, Chestnut hands it off to Rosine. Ethan in the corner right, back to Siebold. Out top, Wallace, around left, here's Leiby. Lane Leiby's hit three trays in this game. He has it at the point now, around left to Seabold. Rosine holds outside. Now to Seabold again. He'll work it right baseline. Not there. Backs it out with the dribble. 
Now looks inside for Chestnut. Morgan turns, puts it up on a fall away, and can't get the wrist, the uh, rattle in. Instead, Rosine, the stick back, it won't go. Ball loose in the lane. Wagner comes out of there with it. One on two. He'll take it up. No. Rebound. Wallace and Livey were both back there defending, and Livey brings it down on the miss. Here's Wallace, right, right wing. Between the legs on the crossover. Double pump in the paint. No. Tip out rebound goes to Seabold. Here's Livey with 548 to work in the fourth, and the Tigers trailing 40-37. Both teams scoreless through the fourth quarter thus far. Tigers still down by three. Here's Wallace to the point. Chestnut. Left side wing is Livey. Lane gives it off further deep on the wing to Seabold. Now Caleb with the dribble backs it out and says, clears Lane Livey out, gets it to the high post for Rosine. Livey, right side wing is Seabold. Caleb holds outside, now backs it out, gives it to Lane Livey, works it left toward the baseline, backs it out again. Now goes inside, good look for Rosine, and a timeout taken before Rosine was going to take it toward the ring, and so a timeout taken here on the floor. It's a full timeout, 40-37, Tigers down by a triple. Again, we'll check in with Phil Casper. Hi, Rock, and once again, you're checking in when we're shooting free throws. Joe Rupke stands at the line. She's shooting two. Valley Heights up 54-33. She cannot hit free throws today. Joe Rupke is about 5 of 11 from the line now, but she has 33 points in this ball game. 54-33, Valley Heights leads with 343 left in the game. All right, Phil, thanks. Again, uh, Valley Heights kind of stretching that out in the uh, second half after a great uh, battle thus far from the Clifton Clyde Lady Eagles here. The Tigers and Riley County Falcons through two minutes and 48 seconds have both been scoreless in the fourth quarter. So the 40-37 lead for Riley County is still intact. Uh, the Tigers, though, battling here, and they have the possession on their end, uh, trying to get a bucket to get this back down to one point. They trailed by seven at the end of one quarter, by six at halftime. They were down seven in the third quarter, then cut it down to one at one point, and now they trail by three, as they did at the end of the third, 40-37. to 5-12 remains fourth quarter. Lane Lively will inbound right of the glass. Looks in low to Rosine, not there. Now bounce passes out of the baseline to Ethan. Handed back out. Livey for the tie. His foot, four three-pointer of the ball game. He has 13, and it's a tie game at 40-40. So Lane Magic Livey gets it off the kickout from Rosine, and we're all tied at 40 apiece. Pass tipped away by the Tigers out of bounds to Riley County right in front of Coach Steve Fritz's bench. 4.55 remains fourth quarter. The fourth three ball from Lane Libby today, 13 points now in this contest. Correction, 14 in a game for Libby. Here's a drive by Nelson. Kick down low. Zach Richards the finish, and the Falcons right back up by two. Nelson came from the backcourt on a cut on the wing right and drove the lane, but a pass on the money to Richard for two. Here's Chestnut. Right side wing, Rosine hands off to Mason Allberg. At the point is Chestnut. Morgan gives it away to Lane Libby. Now, Rosine wants the long two-pointer, and he ties it back up again, 42-42. Rosine becomes the second Tiger in double digits. He has 10, six here in the second half. Pulled that one from just beyond the free throw stripe. Now pass to the deep corner. Wagner to Halstead. Back to Wagner. Three-pointer for the Falcons. It's good. Wagner now with 16, and the Tigers trail by three. And after almost three minutes of no scoring from either team, now both teams are starting to light it up just a little bit. Here's Seabold off the pass from Rosine. Wrap around to Ethan. Rosine has it knocked out of his hands. Foul called. Fifth team foul now on both teams here in the second half. No free throws. There's no bonus on either team, and that was on the floor. 4 one to go, fourth quarter. Tigers trailing by three with possession. Lane Lively left to the glass. Looks down low for Seabold. Not there. Now to Chestnut. Pull-up jumper just inside the free throw line. Good touch by Big Mo, and he's got five down there, four down the game after the bucket hit at the free throw line. 45 44, Tigers down by one. Double team on the half court pressure by the Tigers. Ball taken away by Mason Alberg. Mason at the left side, stops on the wing left, backs it out, will set the offense. Tigers can take the lead on this possession with a two or a three. Alberg out top, ball tipped away for a moment. Now he has it back, holds. 
Looking inside, now instead wrap around pass up top to Livy. Here's Rosine against Thomas. Spins, turns, puts it off window, and it won't go down. The rebound away to Zach Richard. Good look for Rosine. Wagner in the front court. Back to Nelson. Corner he goes to Richard. Trapping defense for the Tigers has paid some dividends here in the second half. Now high post is Thomas. Back in the corner for Wagner. He hit his last three. Jackson Wagner missing this one short. Rebound to Chestnut. Tigers on the move. Here's Alberg. Drops it down low. Rosine settles. Puts it up and down. The Tigers have taken the lead. 46-45 with 2.53 remaining fourth quarter. 46-45 Tigers by one. We check in now with Bill Casper over at the TVL. Hi, Rock. Thanks. Coach Jenny Youngenberg has cleared her bench, as has Coach Kyron Works, 55-36. Valley Heights leading Clifton Clyde with a minute 40 to play. 34 from Joe Rupke, 18 from Kayla Smith, 55-36. Valley Heights lead. All right, Phil, thanks. 46-45 here. The Clay Center Tigers have come from seven down in the second half. And the bucket just hit by Ethan Rosine inside the lane gives the Tigers a lead by one. He now has 12. Lane Leiby with 13, 14 in a game. And then you have nine from Caleb Siebel leading the way. Good balance across the board. Three points also from Parker Folks, Morgan Chestnut, and Mason Alberg. And a two-point bucket from Kate Wallace. Riley County will have the basketball. The Tigers lead by one, 46-45. Tigers breaking huddle. Mason Alberg stays in. He and Caleb Siebel both over near the sideline. Not sure they knew which one was going to be on the court. Alberg is in. He's on the wing with Cade Wallace on the 1-3-1 defense. Rosine out top. Chestnut down the middle and Lane Leiby down low. Left his record in deep. 240 remains in this ball game. Near steal by Rosine. He knocks it to the backcourt. Nelson runs it down for the balcony. In the double team, and now the steal by Rosine goes to the backcourt again. Riley County runs it down. Tigers won it over and back, but it was tipped away by Rosine. Now the drive by Wagner to finish inside. He has 18 now, and the Tigers trail by one. Here's Wallace to the front court. Well, pressure from Riley County. Dade Wallace with 212 to work, works it on the sideline right, clears things out. Now holds, and up top it comes to Alberg. He'll dump it down inside Rosine. Back out, Alberg for the lead. Just strong on his three. Morgan Chestnut, great battle with Zach Richard on the weak side. Richard, though, able to pull it away. And now Riley County travels with the basketball. The catch by Ty Record in traffic. He almost held that pivot foot down, just could not keep it on the floor, and the Tigers do get it back. They trail by one. Under two minutes now remaining in this fourth. Here's Wallace, right wing and deep. Cade brings it out top to Lane Leiby. To the high post, it goes to Rosine. Steps in the lane, and all the way to the paint, he traveled with the basketball. He had established that left pivot foot and then turned and took a big step toward the paint. And so called for the travel, 47-46. A minute 42 remains here in this fourth quarter. Alberton will come out. Seabold back in. Clay Center down by one. Minute 42 remains fourth. Riley County with the basketball. Ty Nelson will work it up the floor. Tigers have been predominantly 1-3-1 defense here in the second half. It has caused some problems for the Falcons. Rucker has it. Back right and deep to Nelson. Takes it to the corner. Now back out toward the timeline. And Riley County is going to shorten the game a little bit. Delivered on offense. Now in the corner is Wagner. Triple penetrates to the lane. And can't get it down. Rebound tipped around. Lane Livey has it. Livey, left side wing. Hesitation move. Now pulls it up and can't get it down. Rebound out of bounds two. They'll say Clay Center keeps it on the baseline. 47-46. Riley County, the one-point lead. Cade Wallace will inbound for right of the glass. Wallace looks out to the free throw line. Rosine, ball fake, drives with the left hand and the lead back to the Tigers. Rosine now with 14 in the game. And the finish... On the left side, it's 48-47. Tigers now by one. Nelson through the midcourt stripe. Under a minute to go in this game. In the corner left is Fritz. Back outside Ruckert. He works it left. Seabold defending and now a blocking foul. Still no bonus for either team. That'll be the sixth team foul on the Tigers. There have been five whistles against Riley County here in the half. So it's Falcon basketball out of bounds. T.J. Fritz to inbound it. 
for the Falcons. 48 seconds left. Play center by one off the left-handed drive. The last trip down by Ethan Rosine. Nelson holds the dribble at the point, looks at the clock, sees 44 on it, and ticking. Wagner now toward the free throw line, spins his way toward the lane, kicks it out to Fritz, not a record. Right side wing is Nelson. 33 seconds left. Wagner against Siebel. Ball fake. He drives to the lane. Bucket good and a foul. A chance at a three-point play now for Jackson Wagner. So quick off the dribble, he has 20, and he was able to get contact on his way up. They call this on Cade Wallace, his second, and a chance at a three-point play now for Riley County. Jackson Wagner, the senior, with 20 points. And we'll try to convert the old-fashioned three. It would put Riley County up by two if he makes. Still 29 seconds to work. Free throw on its way. Rims off. Rebound to Ethan Rosine. Now to Seabold. Tigers with the possession. Down by one. Seabold to the front court. Caleb. They clear it out on that left side. Seabold trying to get a drive. Can't. Off to Wallace with 15 now. To the post for Rosine. Ball fake. Steps to the lane. Dumps it off. He was trying to get it to Wallace. It is taken away by the Falcon. Tigers have to foul. And they do get one call on the sideline. It'll be a one and one chance for Riley County. Rosine tried to drop it down low and a cut to Cade Wallace. Tragen Thomas made the defensive stop for Riley County. It'll be Jackson Wagner at the line to shoot a one and one. Six seconds now left. Riley County by one, 49-48. Wagner with 20 points. Missed his last free throw. This is a one-and-one chance here. Even with both, the Tigers will have at least a look to try to tie it. First free throw is good. That makes it a two-point game. 50-48. One more free throw coming for the 5-11 senior. That's 21 today. Lead is two. Wagner's free throw up. It's a three-point ball game. And a timeout taken by Coach Steve Fritz. We'll take a break here as well. You're listening to Play Center Tiger Basketball on KCOY. Outstanding products produce outstanding yields. That's why Valley Irrigation manufactures the most advanced center pivots the industry can offer. Our innovative technology and reliable dealers can help you save water, energy, and labor. No one else offers the same durability and dependability of a Valley machine. Reliability is too important to entrust to anyone less than the leader in precision irrigation. Contact your local Valley dealer today. See Republican Valley Irrigation or call 632-5588. 51-48, the Tigers will have six seconds to get it down the floor and try to get a three-point shot away and tie this thing and maybe send it to overtime. It has been a great battle. Riley County got up early, 16-9 at the end of one quarter. They were up six at halftime. Tigers fell behind by seven again in the third and then battled back, got within one, finally took a lead late fourth quarter for the first time, and then both teams traded leads back and forth until eventually the Tigers with a turnover gave Riley counted the basketball, two free throws from Jackson Wagner now has 22 in this game. The same number he put on the board last night against Hillsboro. The Tigers will have the basketball, though, still six seconds to work to try to get it down the floor and a chance of the three ball to tie. Let's see if the Falcons allow them to get a shot away or if they'll try to stop the clock, stop the possession with a foul. They only have five whistles against. Here's Wallace. He's got a look at it. Three-pointer would tie it off the back iron. Albert tip out and Riley County will hold on to win it. The Falcons, a 51-48 final. Made Wallace. The Falcons were trying to foul at half court. Wallace got a leaning three at the top of the key. It just caught the back iron. To finish here, Riley County with a three-point winner and a great battle against the Tigers. 51-48 is your final. Let's take a two-minute timeout. I'll come back and get you a recap of this one, scoring leaders, and get you kind of set for what's still to come here on KCOY after these. Hanson Ford is starting off the year with amazing deals during their 2016 Ford sales event. There are a few 2015 models left, including a Ford F-150, a Super Duty Crew Cab, and a Ford Fusion. You'll discover huge Ford rebates on select trucks and SUVs. Take the road by storm with the powerful all-new 2016 F-350s, Explorers, and Fusions. Power, performance, style, and comfort, and savings. Don't miss out on the greatest deals this month at Hanson Ford in Play Center. 
Why would you get a home loan at Union State Bank? One, your loan stays here in Clay Center, which means it's not sold to a lender in another state or country. Two, you can come in and see the same loan officer who helped you with your loan, which means no 800 numbers or foreign speaking customer service reps. Three, this is your loan with your local bank for your community. Union State Bank has helped hold this community together for over a hundred years. So let us help you out on your next loan. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Timing is everything on wheat fertilizer. It can maximize both yield and nutrient use efficiency, thereby increasing net profit for the producer. At Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed and Feed, we offer a complete line of fertilizer and herbicides best suited for your fields. Timely control of weeds can limit soil moisture loss to weeds and prevent the deposit of more weed seeds in the soil, two factors that can benefit the next crop's yield. Our field specialists Brent, Allen, Darren, Kent, Mike, and Kenny at Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed and Feed are here and ready to help you. Have you visited Central Valley Ag's website, cvacoop.com? If not, you should. Check grain bids at your local CVA. Check the weather. Watch a how-to video. Keep up with co-op news and upcoming events. Or visit the blog page for weekly updates from CVA grain and agronomy professionals. cvacoop.com. Central Valley Ag. Growing agriculture together. Central Valley Ag. Where the customer comes first. The 51-48 is your final. The Clay Center Tigers with the three-point loss, battling from seven points down in the third to get it within three. Actually, within one in the third quarter, but at three at the end of the third quarter break. And as you went to the fourth quarter, back and forth, the Tigers finally took a lead late fourth, traded leads down the stretch until eventually the turnover set up uh, the Tigers forced a foul. And then Jackson Wagner knocked in two free throws, which made it a three-point game. The Tigers got a look to tie it. And it went off the back iron from Kay Wallace. And so the final 51-48, Clay Center taking a loss to Riley County. Let's give you a look at the scoring leaders. Jackson Wagner for the second straight day, 22 points. He would knock down two threes in the second half on his way to that 22-point performance for the 5'11 senior. Ten points from Tyler Halstead. Five from Ty Nelson. Four each from Zach Richard and Dalt Huey. Three points for Tragen Thomas. Ty Record would knock in two for the Falcons. Clay Center. Good balance attack as well. 14 each, Lane Leiby and Ethan Rosine. Leiby with four three-pointers today. Caleb Siebold had nine. Uh, three each then coming from Mason Allberg on a three-pointer. Morgan Chestnut with three. Parker Folks with three. And Cade Wallace would knock in one bucket for two. And the Tigers suffer a 51-48 loss at the hands of Riley County, dropping the Tigers now to three and nine on the season uh, with the loss here and uh, – the finish at the Hillsboro Trojan Classic. Now, still to come here from Hillsboro is going to be a matchup for the place of the Lady Tigers at 545. They will get a chance to face Heston. That's a rematch of last year's championship game. Uh, Heston still stayed ranked this year. They don't have all the guns they had last season that the Lady Tigers took on. Uh, two state ranked teams will go head to head for that title coming up this evening. Should be a really, really good matchup here on KCLY. That's at 545. Still games to come, though. At the TVL, uh, Valley Heights did go on to win that game against Clifton Clyde. Uh, the final would be the Valley Heights Lady Mustangs 55-36. 34 points from Joe Repke, Kayla Smith 18. The Lady Eagles got 11 from Macy Callahan. And then you look at uh, what's still to come for the TVL this afternoon. There'll be a fifth-place game coming up next, Hanover and Donathan West. That'll be followed by a third-place boys matchup, Washington County and Centralia. And then the two championship games, Hanover and Centralia at 6, Valley Heights boys against Troy at 7.30. Going to wrap it up here from Hillsboro High uh, Middle School, I should say, their middle school gym. We'll be heading over to the high school gym. Now, I'm going to stay on with, with Flip throughout uh, the next game because uh, the Riley County Falcon girls will be playing here uh, against host Hillsboro. And so I'll at least keep you up to date on the, that KCLY community team while he brings you all the coverage of the Twin Valley League. From Frankfurt. 51 48, Tigers with the loss here to Riley County by three in a great back and forth battle against the Falcons. But to wrap it up for now, we'll take you back to the studios. When we return, Bill Casper will have that matchup for fifth place, Hanover, and Donovan West coming up in just a bit. And he finishes. Quick draw with six down. The lead back down to three. Great pass from Caleb Siebold. Had a good angle on that wing right and was able to feed it on a bounce right to Rosine for the easy duck inside. Here's Nelson out to the left wing. He goes to Thomas. Touch pass for Wagner. Top of the key, Nelson. 
Doesn't look at a three this time. Now around left, Wagner. He also had a chance, didn't take it. Instead, the floater near, floater near the lane, and Wagner has 10. The lead back to 5, 31 26. Here's Wallace in the lane. Ball batted away. Wagner has it. He's tripped by Chestnut. And it'll be Riley County's basketball on the sideline. 4.23 left to go, third quarter. Tigers down by 5, and Riley County gets it back. Chestnut with his second foul. Tigers have Wallace and Rosine. Wybie, Chestnut, Seabold on the floor. For the Falcons, Nelson, Wagner, Ruckert, Thomas, and Richard. Nelson to the corner right, Rucker back outside deep is Jackson Wagner. Three-pointer try again. This time he connects. He has 13 now. The Tigers trail by eight. Here's Wallace in the front court, 34-26. Midway point, third quarter, four minutes left to third. Elbow left is Chestnut, hands it off to Wallace. Ball takes it back out to Seabolt. Caleb looks to drive, not there. Around right it goes to Lyby. Lane, back to Seabolt. Now left wing deep, Wallace. Cade looking in low. Skips it to the elbow right, Chestnut. Attacks against Richard. Turns, spins, block, rebound to Seabolt. Caleb right back in the lane. Fires it up, fouled. He'll step to the stride. Caleb Seabold will get to the free throw line. He has seven points in the game, one of three at the line in the contest. He'll get two free throws coming here. 3.39 left third quarter. Seabold's free throw up and good. Gets the lead back down to seven. It was a six-point game at halftime. Allstead and Fritz back in the game now for Riley County. Caleb Seabold with eight points. One more charity coming. The Tigers trailing 34-27, but again, one more free throw now on the way. This one up and crawling in there. Seabold has nine. And the Tigers are back within six, 34-28, still 3.39 left third quarter. Wagner will walk it up. Tigers in a 1-3-1 zone. Rosine at the point. Folks in the middle. Wallace and Alberg on the wings. Livey down low. Fritz in the corner. Double teamed, and ball gets batted out of bounds. It will stay with play center on the sideline. 34-28 ball game. Or it stays with Riley Kelly, I should say, as the ball was batted out of bounds by Cade Wallace in a double team. Thomas into... Record. Still holding right. Double team coming again. Now near the timeline. Ball forced away. Albert, good hustle play. Wagner then on the other end able to take it back for Riley County. Wagner in transition. Ball tipped away to the sideline. Saved in by Fritz. Now Libby near steal. Did he knock it off of Riley County? He did. Libby, great hustle play on the sideline. Both teams really made a couple of plays to keep the basketball alive, but eventually Lane Libby not only tipped it away, but off of the Riley County Falcons, Tragen Thomas, and so Placeter gets it back down six, 309 to work. Here's Wallace, fakes left, goes right all the way to the glass and good. Murph with his first bucket. He had three assists in the first half, but his first point scored on a drive down inside. 1-3-1 one, one zone defense, under three to work. Records at the corner, Fritz. Lobs it to cross paint, ball nearly taken away by Allberg. Now the dive by Rosine keeps it alive. Wallace in the front court. The Tigers down by four. And back with possession again. The lead had grown to seven. And now the Tigers cut it to uh, two buckets and have the basketball. Wallace out deep left. Out top to Livy. Rosine posting. Wants it inside. They take it to him. Off glass. Shot on the run. No. Rebound. Almost tied up by Rosine. But it's ripped away by Ruckert. In the front court, Wagner. Double team comes at him. Lane Livy. Great anticipation. Now Albert to Rosine. Back to Livy. Lane. Oh, great look inside. Rosine can't finish. One more chance, though, and we got a two-point ball game. Rosine with eight, and now Kelly Williams wants a timeout to coach on the Tigers' sideline. Clay Center back within 234-32. We'll check it again now in Frankfurt with, with Casper. All right, Rock, we've got three quarters in the books headed to the fourth. It is a 39-27 Valley Heights lead. They've stretched this out a little bit. Macy Callahan has 11 for Clifton Clyde. Joe Rupke now has 26 points in this ball game. 13 from Kayla Smith. Two players have 39 points for Valley Heights at up 39-27. It's a 34-32 ball game here. Uh, you mentioned Joe Rupke. We know going to Washburn next year to play and had a chance to call her last game last Saturday. Valley Heights played the Mustang. She scored 30 in that opening game. So Maybe on our way to another 30-plus point performance this year. 34-32 here. Tigers trail by two, but 
They were down by as many as seven and cut it down to a two-point ball game. 2.09 left third quarter. Wagner walks it through the center circle. Now goes to work against Wallace. Kick out left side. Halstead will drive. He's cut off by Parker Folks, but gets the shot up over and off glass and good. Halstead, who had six first-half rebounds, has now six points in the game to go along with it. Here's Livy out deep for Wallace. Cade back to Lane Livy. Hit two threes in the first half. On his way to eight points, he's yet to score here in the second half of play. 36-32, a minute 35 to work third quarter. Tigers with the basketball down by four. Rosine down to Parker Folks. Goes for the reverse lay, and he's fouled. And Big Daddy's headed to the stripe to shoot two free throws. He was one of two at the line in the first half. Took his reverse lay-in on the weak side. Shot was not near the rim, but he was bumped underneath the backboard, and the foul was called against Riley County's Tragen Thomas' third. Folks at the line, first free throw, up and good. Parker now with two points in the game. The lead back down to three for Riley County. Rosine will come out. He's been doing a good job to continue playing with the three fouls he had against. Did not pick up another. He comes to the sideline with the 30 left third quarter. Folks made the first free throw. Gets the crawl on the second when he has three points in the game, three or four at the line. A minute 30 remains. It's 36 34. Tigers back within two again. Riley County's possession. Now Mason Allberg out at the point of the one three one zone defense. Wallace and Siebold on the wings. Now the dribble drive baseline left. Hall set cut off. Out top to Nelson. Takes the three. Starts it left. Now Siebold and Allberg. They kick it right corner to Thomas. Wallace almost got for the basketball. Now the pass inside the lane. Zach Richard dump off for Hall set. His bucket's good. He has eight. Play center down by four. Wallace back to the way. Lane Libby takes the three. Steps toward the paint. Stops and outside it comes to Keith Wallace. Down the corner, Libby for the three ball. His third of the game. Libby with 11, and the Tigers within one, 38-37. Magic knocks it down left corner. Good kick out off the drive from Cade Wallace. 45 to work. Long pass down the floor. Halstead saved what looked like it might be going out of bounds. Now Seabold and Libby, good double team. Halstead gets rid of it. Record has it. Now around right baseline, Thomas rises up for the 16-footer. No, Halstead, another rebound, and a stick-back bucket good. Tyler Halstead now with 10 points and seven boards in this game, and he's headed to the line to try to convert an old-fashioned three-pointer. He has put Riley County back on top by three, 40-37. Halstead with a free throw coming, a six-foot sophomore, now with 10 points. At the stripe, Lefty puts it up, rims it off, rebound to Libby. Tigers down three with the basketball. Lane Libby down court, stops at the point. Works it right wing now, holds outside, top of the key, Wallace fakes it, steps in, pulls from 15 feet, and it rims off. Rebound kept alive by Allburn, but it's picked up by Riley County with 12. Ty Nelson to the front court. Ten seconds left. Here's Zach Richard. Kick out to Rucker. Down to seven. Now six. They kick it across baseline right. Thomas tries to drive it, and he's It'll be fouled by Lane Libby, a blocking foul. And with three seconds remaining, Riley County will have it on the baseline, leading by three from underneath the basket. The foul on Lane Libby that trip will be his second. Thomas to inbound. Three seconds remains in the third. Tigers down by three. Record for three at the buzzer. No good. Rebound to Caleb Siebold. A good one here in Hillsboro. Tigers have battled back within three. We're headed to the final eight minutes. It's Riley County 40, play center 37. Let's send it over now to Bill Casper. All right, Rock shooting free throws here. Shaley Lawson stands at the line, hits one, can't hit the other one. Rebound over, leans in, and she fouled. It is 48-32, Valley Heights up with 5.41 left in the ballgame. The biggest news since we last talked, somebody not named Smith or Rubke scored for Valley Heights. A three ball for Shea Manley, Joe Rubke sits at 28. It is 48-32, 5.41 left of the game. All right, Phil, as always, we appreciate it. Let's get a 30-second timeout. Your fourth quarter from Hillsboro is coming up next. Get more than propane when Propane Central delivers. Get a free gas system check. Payment plans to fit any budget and flexible delivery options. 
You can also earn free gas with their generous customer referral program. Just another way, Propane Central offers the best value in propane. And it's to the fourth quarter here. Riley County will have the basketball to start. It is double teamed by Clay Center, and they force a travel on the opening possession. Ty Nelson walked right into a double team there, and that's uh, no man's land you want to stay out of just across the half court line on the sideline, and the Tigers force him into a turnover and get it back down by three. Cade Wallace with the dribble out top. Ty Nelson on him. They'll work at left wing. Now looks to the baseline, not there, around right, Livey fakes the three, steps in, kick out, Wallace, also a fake on the three, doesn't take it, they'll back it out and recue the offense. Wallace with it, right side. Now to Seabold, back to Cade. Now Seabold again with it, 721 to work, fourth quarter, lobbed down into the paint. Rosine trying to go to work, double team, kick out to Seabold. Chestnut and Rosine run the post on the ball side. Now Seabold all the way around to the left corner, and he walks with a basketball. The Tigers turned it over, as did the Riley County Falcons on the first fourth quarter possession. So possession goes back again to the Falcons. one 3 one defense for Clay Center. Wagner to Ty Nelson. Left sideline, now kicks it back across. The ball nearly taken away by Cade Wallace. It was thrown behind Wagner. Wallace thought he could get to it and have a chance on the other end, but he just couldn't quite get possession of it. And so Riley County will keep the basketball. 40-37 ball game, 6.54 to work here in the fourth quarter. Tigers down by three. Ty Nelson gets it in the backcourt. 40-37 ball game. Here's Nelson near the timeline, right back to Halstead, and he walked with the basketball. So both teams have had multiple turnovers to begin the fourth quarter. Tigers still trail here by the three-point margin at 40-37. Wallace to Rosine, left wing deep, Seabold. Down to the right elbow, Chestnut hands it off to Rosine. Ethan in the corner right, back to Seabold. Out top, Wallace. Around left, here's Leiby. Lane Leiby's hit three trays in this game. He has it at the point now, around left to Seabold. Rosine holds outside. Now to Seabold again. He'll work it right baseline. Not there. Backs it out with the dribble. Now looks inside for Chestnut. Morgan turns, puts it up on a fall away, and can't get the wrist, the uh, rattle in. Instead, Rosine, the stick back. It won't go. Ball loose in the lane. Wagner comes out of there with it. One on two. He'll take it up. No. Rebound Wallace and Leiby. We're both back there defending, and Livey brings it down on the miss. Here's Wallace, right, right wing, between the legs on the crossover, double pump in the paint. No, tip out rebound goes to Seabold. Here's Livey with 5.48 to work in the fourth, and the Tigers trailing 40-37. Both teams scoreless through the fourth quarter thus far. Tigers still down by three. Here's Wallace to the point, Chestnut. Left side wing is Livey. Lane gives it off further deep on the wing to Seabold. Now, Caleb with the dribble, backs it out, and says, clears Lane Leiby out, gets it to the high post for Rosine. Leiby, right side wing is Seabold. Caleb holds outside, now backs it out, gives it to Lane Leiby, works it left toward the baseline, backs it out again. Now goes inside, good look for Rosine, and a timeout taken before Rosine was going to take it toward the ring, and so a timeout taken here on the floor. It's a full timeout, 40-37, Tigers down by a triple. Again, we'll check in with Phil Casper. Hi, Rock. And once again, you're checking in when we're shooting free throws. Joe Rubke stands at the line. She's shooting two. Valley Heights up 54-33. She cannot hit free throws today. Joe Rubke is about 5 of 11 from the line now, but she has 33 points in this ball game. 54-33, Valley Heights leads with 3.43 left in the game. All right, Phil, thanks. Again, uh, Valley Heights kind of stretching that out in the uh, second half after a great uh, battle thus far from the Clifton Clyde Lady Eagles here. The Tigers and Riley County Falcons through two minutes and 48 seconds have both been scoreless in the fourth quarter. So the 40-37 lead for Riley County 
is still intact. Uh, the Tigers, though, battling here, and they have the possession on their end, uh, trying to get a bucket to get this back down to one point. They trailed by seven at the end of one quarter, by six at halftime. They were down seven in the third quarter, then cut it down to one at one point, and now they trail by three, as they did at the end of the third, 40 to 37. 5 12 remains, fourth quarter. Lane Lively will inbound right of the glass. Looks in low to Rosine, not there. Now bounce passes out of the baseline to Ethan. Handed back out. Lively for the tie. His four, four three pointers of ball game. He has 13, and it's a tie game at 40 40. So Lane Magic Lively gets it off the kick out from Rosine, and we're all tied at 40 apiece. Pass tipped away by the Tigers out of bounds to Riley County right in front of. Coach Steve Fritz's bench. 4.55 remains, fourth quarter. The fourth three ball from Lane Leiby today. 13 points now in this contest. Correction 14 in a game for Leiby. Here's a drive by Nelson. Kick down low. Zach Richards to finish. And the Falcons right back up by two. Nelson came from the back court on a cut on the wing right and drove the lane. But a pass on the money to Richard for two. Here's Chestnut. Right side wing, Rosine hands off to Mason Allberg. At the point is Chestnut. Morgan gives it away to Lane Leiby. Now Rosine wants the long two-pointer, and he ties it back up again, 42-42. Rosine becomes the second Tiger in double digits. He has 10, six here in the second half. Pulled that one from just beyond the free throw strike. Now pass to the deep corner. Wagner to Halstead. Back to Wagner. Three-pointer for the Falcons. It's good. Wagner now with 16 and the Tigers trail by three, and after almost three minutes of no scoring from either team, now the both teams are starting to light it up just a little bit. Here's Seabold off the pass from Rosine. Wrap around to Ethan. Rosine has it knocked out of his hands. Foul called. Fifth team foul now on both teams here in the second half. No free throws. as no bonus on either team, and that was on the floor. 4-0-1 to go, fourth quarter. Tigers trailing by three with possession. Lane Leiby left to the glass. Looks down low for Seabold, not there, now to Chestnut. Pull-up jumper just inside the free-throw line. Good touch by Big Mo, and he's got five down there, four down in the game. After the bucket, hit at the free-throw line. 45-44, Tigers down by one. Double team on the half-court pressure by the Tigers. Ball taken away by Mason Alberg. Mason at the left side, stops on the wing left, backs it out, will set the offense. Tigers can take the lead on this possession for the two or a three. Alberg out top. Ball tipped away for a moment. Now he has it back. Holds. Looking inside. Now instead wrap around pass up top to Livy. Here's Rosine against Thomas. Spins. Turns. Puts it off. Window and it won't go down. The rebound away to Zach Richard. Good look for Rosine. Wagner in the front court. Back to Nelson. Corner he goes to Richard. Trapping defense for the Tigers is paying some dividends here in the second half. Now high post is Thomas. Back in the corner for Wagner hit his last three. Jackson Wagner missing this one short. Rebound to Chestnut. Tigers on the move. Here's Alberg. Drops it down low. Rosine settles. Puts it up and down. The Tigers have taken the lead. 46-45 with 2.53 remaining fourth quarter. 46-45 Tigers by one. We check in now with Bill Casper over at the TVL. Hi, Rock. Thanks, Coach Jenny Youngberg has cleared her bench, as has Coach Kyron Works, 55-36. Valley Heights leading Clifton Clyde with a minute 40 to play. 34 from Joe Rubke, 18 from Kayla Smith. 55-36, Valley Heights lead. All right, Phil, thanks. 46-45 here. The Clay Center Tigers have come from seven down in the second half, and the bucket just hit by Ethan Rosine inside the lane gives the Tigers a lead by one. He now has 12. Lane Leiby with 14 in a game. And then you have nine from Caleb Siebold leading the way. Good balance across the board. Three points also from Parker Folks, Morgan Chestnut, and Mason Alberg, And a two-point bucket from Cade Wallace. Riley County will have the basketball. The Tigers lead by one. 46-45. Tigers breaking huddle. Mason Alberg stays in. He and Caleb Siebel both over near the sideline. I'm not sure they knew which one was going to be on the court. Albert Duzani's on the wing with Cade Wallace on the 1 3 1 defense. Rosine out top, Chestnut down the middle, and Lane Livey down low. 
left his record in deep. 240 remains in this ball game. Near steal by Rosini. Knocks it to the backcourt. Nelson runs it down for the Falcon. In the double team. And now the steal by Rosine goes to the backcourt again. Riley County runs it down. Tigers won it over and back, but it was tipped away by Rosine. Now the drive by Wagner and the finish inside. He has 18 now, and the Tigers trail by one. Here's Wallace to the front court. A little pressure from Riley County. Dade Wallace with 212 to work. Works it on the sideline right. Clears things out. Now holds, and up top it comes to Allberg. He'll dump it down inside of Rosine. Back out, Allberg for the lead. Just strong on his three. Morgan Chestnut, great battle with Zach Richard on the weak side. Richard, though, able to pull it away. And now Riley County travels with the basketball. The catch by Ty Record in traffic. He almost held that pivot foot down, just could not keep it on the floor, and the Tigers do get it back. They trail by one. Under two minutes now remaining in this fourth. Here's Wallace, right wing and deep. Cade brings it out top to Lane Leiby. To the high post, it goes to Rosine. Steps in the lane, and all the way to the paint, he traveled with the basketball. He had established that left pivot foot and then turned and took a big step toward the paint. And so called for the travel, 47-46. A minute 42 remains here in this fourth quarter. Allbird will come out. Seabold back in. Clay Center down by one. Minute 42 remains fourth. Riley County with the basketball. Ty Nelson will work it up the floor. Tigers have been predominantly 1-3-1 defense here in the second half. And have caused some problems for the Falcons. Ruckert has it. Back right and deep to Nelson. Takes it to the corner. Now back out toward the timeline. And Riley County is going to shorten the game a little bit. Delivered on offense. Now in the corner is Wagner. Triple penetrates to the lane. And can't get it down. Rebound tipped around. Lane Livey has it. Livey, left side wing. Hesitation move. Now pulls it up and can't get it down. Rebound out of bounds to They'll say Clay Center keeps it on the baseline. 47-46, Riley County, the one-point lead. Cade Wallace will inbound from right of the glass. Wallace looks out to the free throw line. Rosine, ball fake, drives with the left hand and the lead back to the Tigers. Rosine now with 14 in the game. And the finish on the left side, it's 48-47. Tigers now by one. Nelson through the midcourt stripe. Under a minute to go in this game. In the corner left. Is Fritz back outside Rucker? He works it left. Seabold defending and now a blocking foul. Still no bonus for either team. That'll be the sixth team foul on the Tigers. There have been five whistles against Riley County here in the half. So it's Falcon basketball out of bounds. DJ Fritz to inbound it for the Falcons. 48 seconds left. Play center by one off the left handed drive. The last trip down by Ethan Rosine. Nelson. Holds the dribble at the point, looks at the clock, sees 44 on it, and ticking. Wagner now toward the free throw line, spins his way toward the lane, kicks it out to Fritz, not a rucker. Right side wing is Nelson. 33 seconds left, Wagner against Siebel. Ball fake, he drives to the lane. Bucket good, and a foul. A chance at a three-point play now for Jackson Wagner. So quick off the dribble, he has 20, and he was able to get contact on his way up. They call this on Cade Wallace, his second, and a chance at a three-point play now for Riley County. Jackson Wagner, the senior, with 20 points, and will try to convert the old-fashioned three. It would put Riley County up by two if he makes. Still 29 seconds to work. Free throw on its way. Rims off. Rebound to Ethan Rosie. Now to Seabold. Tigers with the possession, down by one. Seabold to the front court. Caleb. They clear it out on that left side. Seabold trying to get a drive. Can't. Off to Wallace with 15 now. To the post for Rosine. Ball fake. Steps to the lane. Dumps it off. He was trying to get it to Wallace. It is taken away by the Falcon. Tigers have to foul. And they do get one call on the sideline. It'll be a one-and-one chance for Riley County. Rosine tried to drop it down low and a cut to Cade Wallace. Tragen Thomas made the defensive stop for Riley County. It'll be Jackson Wagner at the line to shoot a one-and-one. Six seconds now left. Riley County by one, 49-48. Wagner with 20 points. Missed his last free throw. This is a one-and-one chance here. Even with both, the Tigers will have at least a look to try to tie it. First free throw is good. That makes it a two-point game. 
50-48. One more free throw coming for the 5'11 senior. That's 21 today. Lead is two. Wagner's free throw up. It's a three-point ball game. And a timeout taken by Coach Steve Fritz. We'll take a break here as well. You're listening to Play Center Tiger Basketball on KCOY. Outstanding products produce outstanding yields. That's why Valley Irrigation manufactures the most advanced center pivots the industry can offer. Our innovative technology and reliable dealers can help you save water, energy, and labor. No one else offers the same durability and dependability of a Valley machine. Reliability is too important to entrust to anyone less than the leader in precision irrigation. Contact your local Valley dealer today. See Republican Valley Irrigation or call 632-5588. 51-48, the Tigers will have six seconds to get it down the floor and try to get a three-point shot away and tie this thing and maybe send it to overtime. It has been a great battle. Riley County got up early, 16-9 at the end of one quarter. They were up six at halftime. Tigers fell behind by seven again in the third and then battled back, got within one, finally took a lead late fourth quarter for the first time, and then both teams traded leads back and forth until eventually the Tigers with a turnover gave Riley County the basketball two free throws from Jackson Wagner who now has 22 in this game. The same number he put on the board last night against Hillsboro. The Tigers will have the basketball though. Still six seconds to work to try to get it down the floor and a chance of the three ball to tie. Let's see if the Falcons allow them to get a shot away or if they'll try to stop the clock, stop the possession with a foul. They only have five whistles against. Here's Wallace. He's got a look at it. Three-pointer would tie it. Off the back iron. Auburn tip out and Riley County will hold on to win it. The Falcons, a 51-48 final. Nate Wallace, the Falcons were trying to foul at half court. Wallace got a leaning three at the top of the key. It just caught the back iron. To finish here, Riley County with a three-point winner and a great battle against the Tigers. 51-48 is your final. Let's take a two-minute timeout. I'll come back and Get you a recap of this one, scoring leaders, and get you kind of set for what's still to come here on KCOY after these. Hanson Ford is starting off the year with amazing deals during their 2016 Ford sales event. There are a few 2015 models left, including a Ford F-150, a Super Duty Crew Cab, and a Ford Fusion. You'll discover huge Ford rebates on select trucks and SUVs. Take the road by storm with the powerful all-new 2016 F-350s, Explorers, and Fusions. Power, performance, style, and comfort, and savings. Don't miss out on the greatest deals this month at Hanson Ford in Clay Center. Why would you get a home loan at Union State Bank? One, your loan stays here in Clay Center, which means it's not sold to a lender in another state or country. Two, you can come in and see the same loan officer who helped you with your loan, which means no 800 numbers or foreign speaking customer service reps. Three, this is your loan with your local bank for your community. Union State Bank has helped hold this community together for over a hundred years. So let us help you out on your next loan. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Timing is everything on wheat fertilizer. It can maximize both yield and nutrient use efficiency, thereby increasing net profit for the producer. At Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed and Feed, we offer a complete line of fertilizer and herbicides best suited for your fields. Timely control of weeds can limit soil moisture loss to weeds and prevent the deposit of more weed seeds in the soil, two factors that can benefit the next crop's yield. Our field specialists Brent, Allen, Darren, Kent, Mike, and Kenny at Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed and Feed are here and ready to help you. Have you visited Central Valley Ag's website, cvacoop.com? If not, you should. Check grain bids at your local CVA. Check the weather. Watch a how-to video. Keep up with co-op news and upcoming events. Or visit the blog page for weekly updates from CVA grain and agronomy professionals. cvacoop.com. Central Valley Ag. Growing agriculture together. Central Valley Ag. Where the customer comes first. So 51-48 is your final. The Clay Center Tigers with the three-point loss, battling from seven points down in the third to get it within three, actually within one in the third quarter, but then three at the end of the third quarter break. And as you went to the fourth quarter, back and forth. The Tigers finally took a lead late fourth, traded leads down the stretch until eventually the turnover set up uh, the Tigers forced a foul. And then Jackson Wagner knocked in two free throws, which made it a three-point game. The Tigers got a look to tie it and it went off the back iron from Kay Wallace. 
And so the final 51-48, Clay Center taking a loss to Riley County. Let's give you a look at the scoring leaders. Jackson Wagner for the second straight day, 22 points. He would knock down two threes in the second half on his way to that 22-point performance for the 5'11 senior. Ten points from Tyler Halstead, five from Ty Nelson, four each from Zach Richard and Dalton Huey. Three points for Tragen Thomas. Ty Record would knock in two for the Falcons. Play center, good balance attack as well. 14 each, Lane Leiby and Ethan Rosine. Leiby with four three-pointers today. Caleb Siebold had nine. Uh, three each then coming from Mason Allberg on a three-pointer. Morgan Chestnut with three. Parker Folks with three. And Cade Wallace would knock in one bucket for two. And the Tigers suffer a 51-48 loss at the hands of Riley County, dropping the Tigers now to 3-9 and nine on the season uh, with the loss here and uh, the finish at the Hillsboro Trojan Classic. Now, still to come here from Hillsboro is going to be a matchup for the place of the Lady Tigers at 545. They will get a chance to face Heston. That's a rematch of last year's championship game. Uh, Heston still stayed ranked this year. They don't have all the guns they had last season that the Lady Tigers took on. Uh, two state-ranked teams will go head-to-head for that title coming up this evening. Should be a really, really good matchup here on KCLY. That's at 545. Still games to come, though, at the TVL. Uh, Valley Heights did go on to win that game against Clifton Clyde. Uh, the final would be the Valley Heights Lady Mustangs 55-36. 34 points from Joe Repke, Kayla Smith 18. The Lady Eagles got 11 from Macy Callahan. And then you look at uh, what's still to come for the TVL this afternoon. There'll be a fifth-place game coming up next, Hanover and Donathan West. That'll be followed by a third-place boys matchup, Washington County and Centralia, and then the two championship games, Hanover, Centralia at 6, Valley Heights boys against Troy at 7.30. Going to wrap it up here from Hillsboro High uh, Middle School, I should say, their middle school gym. We'll be heading over to the high school gym. Now, I'm going to stay on with, with Flip throughout uh, the next game because uh, the Riley County Falcon girls will be playing here uh, against host Hillsboro, and so I'll at least keep you up to date on the that KCLY community team while he brings you all the coverage of the Twin Valley League from Frankfurt. 51-48, Tigers with the loss here to Riley County by three in a great back-and-forth battle against the Falcons. That'll wrap it up for now. We'll take you back to the studios. When we return, Bill Casper will have that matchup for fifth place, Hanover, and Donovan West coming up in just a bit.